When I first started plinner painting, I remember how difficult it was to find something that seemed interesting enough to paint or to draw. Sometimes I would drive around for an entire afternoon and not be able to find something that seemed worthy enough to devote some time for painting. I've noticed that a lot of my students and newer artists have the same anxiety and difficulty in deciding what to paint. Sometimes you're in the perfect place where there's majestic beauty all around you and it's very easy to find a subject matter that you want to paint. But most of the time isn't like that. If you're serious about wanting to paint outside and it's something that you want to do all the time, then you're not always going to have the luxury of being in a beautiful area. So what do you paint when you have the desire to paint, but you can't seem to find anything that's worthy of painting? Welcome back. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Leslie and I'm an artist and former art professor, and I create videos about painting and drawing. In this video, I put together 25 ideas of things for you to paint or draw, no matter where you live in the world, and no matter how beautiful or how boring your surroundings are. And if you stick around to the end, I'll take you to a field that's not very inspiring and show you how I might find a few different compositions and things that are interesting to paint there. I'll have some composition tips sprinkled in throughout these tips because if you want your paintings to look interesting, your composition should be interesting to begin with. And one thing that I've noticed a lot of new artists do is they try to put it all in. I want to encourage you to get in the habit of zooming in. Here's a scene of a sapling with a bird feeder attached to it. And it's not a very interesting composition, but if I zoom in a little bit closer, I can create a more interesting, intimate scene. And here's another typical example in a town where I'm standing in an alleyway with these dumpsters. But if I ignore the dumpsters and zoom a little bit farther, I can see this interesting arrangement of different houses that actually makes quite an exciting composition. So let's go. Idea number one is rooftops. Rooftops make for really interesting compositions. I painted this painting when I was waiting for my dog and I was sitting in the alley outside the groomers and it was in the winter in the pouring rain. And I just thought how beautiful these rooftops looked and it was a perfect opportunity to get in a little painting. Idea number two is treetops. Oftentimes people feel like they need to draw the whole tree, but I think it's more interesting to draw a portion of the tree. So whether you zoom in towards the bottom and look at the trunk and the area around it, or zoom in towards the top, especially in the fall, winter, and spring, you can see some really interesting details with trees. And by taking the time to draw or paint them, you're going to really begin to understand the anatomy of a tree, which is going to make it easier to paint them later on when they do have their leaves. Idea number three is clouds. Clouds are always changing. I'm in England right now, and I only see a few clouds in the sky, but that is not the normal situation here. I can look out of my window on any given day at three different times of the day, and I'm going to see three different cloud formations. So sometimes maybe you want to leave out the land altogether and just do some cloud studies. Number four is painting a view from your window. And this can be a window in your home. It can be multiple windows in your homes. You can get multiple paintings by going to different vantage points just in your own house. But you can also look through windows in your car or at a cafe or a restaurant. And especially when the weather is bad, trying to find a really interesting view outside of a window might be the most comfortable way to be able to still be painting what you see, but from the comfort of someplace that's a little bit warmer and out of the elements. Idea number five is your garden or your outdoor space. No matter how boring you think it is, I promise you that you can find something that looks interesting enough to paint. I have this view in my own garden of a wheelbarrow that I abandoned last autumn and that began to sprout weeds and I don't even know what else it's sprouting. And if company were to come over, I probably would have felt kind of embarrassed that my garden was in such disarray. But if I looked at it from an artist's eye, it actually made quite an interesting composition. So try to think outside the norm. Look at your garden through a viewfinder and you might see things a little bit differently. And on that topic of painting something in your own garden is idea number six, which is to paint sheds. 
or greenhouses. And these can be your own or somebody else's. And I wouldn't recommend necessarily trying to fit in the whole shed, but oftentimes you can just find an area of the shed where there's some interesting shadows or some foliage against it, and you can find a really creative composition. Idea number seven is bird feeders and bird baths. You might have these in your own garden, but you can find them anywhere. A lot of restaurants will have them outside or public gardens or parks. And that's an opportunity for a really quaint little painting. Just make sure you zoom in. <laughs> and you might even get a bird or two lingering about that you might be able to put into your painting as well. Idea number eight are trees or flowers that are in bloom. About a month ago, my neighbor's magnolia tree was in full bloom and it was so beautiful. And I've looked at it many years in the past and thought, oh, I should really paint that, and then I didn't. But this time I sat down in my window because it was a very cold day and I did a little painting of it. And I'm so happy to have it now because the blooms have long gone, but I still have the memory of them in my sketchbook. Number nine is laundry hanging up on a laundry line. I always find it so interesting and charming to see laundry hung up. And the play of light and color will make your paintings seem really interesting. And it will give you something fun to practice as well. Idea number nine is to paint weeds. I mean, who are we to call them weeds anyway? A lot of the most common weeds have amazing medicinal properties, and maybe we should celebrate them a little more. You can also find weeds in really interesting places like in the pavement or in stone walls. They have a habit of growing in the most unusual places, and that can make for an unusual and interesting painting. Idea number 11 is fences and gates. You can use these as a foreground for a painting, or you can just do a study of them on their own. If you think about it, some artist already designed these fences and gates, and they create a backdrop for the lives that we live. When you see a gate, people have a natural curiosity to wonder what's beyond that gate. So it makes for a really dynamic composition. Idea number 12 are doors and doorways. Especially if you go into a village or a town, you can find the most interesting doorways. And if you're nervous about painting a doorway of somebody's house, look at shop fronts because they often have really interesting doors as well. And that brings me to tip number 13, which are houses or buildings in your neighborhood. Even a boring house can be made to look interesting if you zoom in for interesting aspects of that house. You can view it from different angles to make it more interesting that way, or you can zoom in on an area where there are flowers or maybe some boxes by the door. It can be a really fun way to practice color and also perspective. Idea number 14 are archways, and these can be natural or manufactured. Similar to the concept of people having curiosity about what's beyond a gate, people will also have curiosity about what's beyond an archway. And it also makes a nice frame for your painting. So you can zero in on the composition beyond an archway to find a really dynamic composition. Idea number 15 is storefronts. And it doesn't matter if you live in some place that has a really boring storefront. I was visiting my mother last month and was at a cafe that didn't have the most exciting views out the window, but there was a Walgreens and it had a tree in front of it that brought some visual interest. And the way the light was shining on it created some other architectural interest. It all depends on how you look at something. You could look at that building and think it's boring, or you could look at it and notice all of the elements that make it interesting. Idea 16, abandoned vehicles. Oftentimes vehicles that are parked somewhere for a long time sort of settle into the earth and maybe they even have some weeds growing up around them and they're dirty in a certain way. The nice thing about an abandoned vehicle is it's going to be a great model for you. It's not going to move. And although the light will move, you can take your time a little bit and get the perspective just so. And idea number 17 is a bicycle or bicycles. Bicycles to me feels so romantic. <laughs> And obviously, if you go to a town that has a lot of cycling, you'll see them. But even if you only focus on an aspect of a bicycle in a painting, it's going to give a little bit of movement to that painting. Idea 18 are houses or buildings as they intersect. So oftentimes you think you have to put in an entire house, but sometimes it's more interesting if you just look at one corner of a house and look at how it's positioned related to another house and zoom in on that area, look for the way the shadows are playing and the way the colors 
make things look different, and you've got yourself a really interesting composition. Idea 19 are churches or temples or some other place of worship. Especially if you're in Europe, they are beautiful. Many of them are old and have a lot of history. But even in America, some of the pioneer churches or some of the cathedrals or bigger churches in bigger cities have fascinating architectural detail that is a wonderful opportunity to be able to practice your painting. And again, with churches, don't think you have to put in an entire church. Oftentimes, just one section of a church is plenty. I loved this little church that was in the middle of Exeter. And even though the design was really simple, the way that the shadows and the light played on it made it a compelling image. Idea number 20 is wildlife. This one can be a little bit trickier because wildlife is known to move. But if you sit still enough, oftentimes birds or swans will come up next to you and they'll sit down and you can have an opportunity to do some quick sketches of them. I live in an area that has a lot of cows and as they graze, they oftentimes don't move that much. And I also have a dog who likes to take naps when I'm painting. So she would be another good model of something to put into a painting. And cows or lambs often will take their time grazing or napping in a meadow and they make for good models as well. Idea number 21 is shadows. You can't be outside without noticing shadows. Even on an overcast day, you're still gonna see some shadows. But if you go out, especially if you go out first thing in the morning or if you go out last thing in the afternoon, you're going to get really long, interesting shadows. So look for interesting shadows when you're picking a composition. Here's an image of a few trees that are casting really interesting shadows on the wall behind them. If those shadows weren't there, the composition wouldn't be as exciting. It's the existence of those shadows that makes them more interesting. Idea number 22 is reflections. And similarly to shadows, reflections can really make a painting go from a six to a 10. And you can find reflections everywhere. You can find them on wet pavement, in puddles, in rivers or lakes, and also in windows. So look for some place that has some interesting reflections and put that in your composition. Idea 23 are flower patches. And this can be something that you see in a public area or something that you see in your own garden. Especially in the summertime, there are flowers in abundance everywhere. Find an interesting patch. Even if it's surrounded by dismal factories, if you zoom in enough, you're gonna see the beauty and be able to paint it. Idea 24 are fields. You can find interesting things in fields to paint. You can be in the most boring of fields and probably find 10 different things that would make good paintings. You can paint a close-up of a tree. You can paint the way that bushes are lined up around the perimeter of the field and cast interesting shadows. You can find a gate or a house that's adjacent to the field. Fields and even parking lots provide different kinds of opportunities. And oftentimes they're less traveled. And idea number 25 is to paint something you've painted before. So often we have this idea that, well, I've already painted that <laughs> and I need to find something new. But there's so much to be learned from painting the same thing over and over again. Monet famously painted his gardens, not only in different seasons, but at different times of the day. And you can do the same thing. Here are a few different oil paintings where it's the same view at different times of the day, where the lighting is different. And I'm seeing different things in both paintings. I'm going to show you how to find someplace interesting, even in the most boring of places. You can see when I turn the camera that there are a lot of interesting places in the distance. There are the moors over here, and there's a really cute village with some nice houses, but there's not really any place very exciting here in the field itself. I've painted this area before, and the way that I was able to make it look more interesting was to zoom in on it, and that way you get the framing of the trees with the interesting aspects of the gate and the stone wall. If I were to paint that same view from the distance that I'm at, it seems pretty uninspiring. It's just a row of the horizon straight across the page with some trees that are more or less the same size. So by zooming in, I'm able to see a little peak of the violet of the moors in the distance, the gate, the stone wall, and the trees that are creating a canopy above it. Another interesting view might be just to take one of the trees, 
zoom in on it and do a detail. You can see here that the sun is hitting this tree and there are some interesting weeds growing underneath it. And because the sun is shining on it, there is more visual interest. And as I walk a little bit farther in the field, I can see this little shepherd's hut over here, which is really pretty. But in order to make it more interesting to draw or paint, again, I would zoom in on it. And then I've created some interesting foliage in the foreground and the three trees in front of it make it a little bit more exciting as well. I think the tendency when you come to some place that's surrounded in beauty and you have 365 degrees surrounding you is to want to put it all in. And as I'm looking at the scene with my eyes, it looks completely different than it looks in the camera right now. And the inclination might be to paint everything that you see and put it all in, but all of these elements of the different houses are the same size, and visually it's not very interesting. So I could shift to one area of the field and zoom in and create a more intimate composition, where I've got a few buildings over on the left, I've got the field in the foreground, and then in the distance, I have the moors with some bushes and a tree on the side, and a gate. And you could crop this any way you want, but it makes the scene feel a bit more cozy. I've walked to the edge of the field, and I'm looking at a little bungalow that's not all that interesting on its own. But if I zoom into it, the jaunty angle of this car is appealing, with the grass growing under it, and the red of the car casts a pink reflection on the garage door. That and the hills in the distance give it much more visual appeal. And if I zoom in a little bit more, I can cut out the edge of the house, which further creates a focal point on the car. There's a little village down here with lots of houses that are facing in all different directions, but because they're so small, it probably wouldn't make a good composition from this distance, especially with this heavy bush in the foreground. So if I go for one of the more exciting buildings, like this house with the thatched roof, I can get rid of some of that superfluous noise and keep the focus on the thatch of the roof, the trees surrounding it, and I still have the moors in the distance, which have a beautiful violet tint to them, contrasted by the yellow-green of the bushes in the foreground. So there's lots of opportunity here for atmospheric perspective and for different colors. One thing I notice as I'm in this field is that it's sprinkled with all of these little daisies and dandelions. And so I want to approach this from a different vantage point to make the most of them. If I sit on the ground, I can put the daisies in the foreground, taking up the bottom two thirds of the composition with the moors in the distance. And it makes things so much more exciting than when I'm just standing up and looking down at them. At another edge of the field is this long metal outbuilding. It's a little too long to make a compelling composition from this distance, but the colors of the rusty roof and the blue paint that's peeling away are so beautiful. So let me show you how I can find a few different compositions here. Every time I come to this field, I'm drawn to the edge of the outbuilding here where the paint is peeling and the roof is rusty. And I have the bush over here on the left. And then over on the right, there's a makeshift gate with an old abandoned wood stove beside it and a car parked behind it. And behind that is a bird feeder with a little cottage. And if I move a little bit more to the right, I have a perfectly framed, charming little composition. If I move to the other end of the shed, I can see various features that are pretty exciting for a painting. There's that same red rustiness of the roof and blue paint, a bush over on the left, and a gate that's angled down so it's keeping the focal point over on the blue building. And then behind that gate is another little shed with some circular windows and even a little statue of a snail on the roof. So those are my 25 ideas. I hope they've helped you, especially if you're doing some kind of painting challenge where you need ideas. Just put yourself out there, bring a viewfinder, close one eye and look around and you can see even the most ordinary of scenes through a different lens. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you'd like some tips for tiny painting, you can click the video right here. I hope you have a beautiful day with many happy painting adventures of your own.